hi everyone a big big welcome back to my channel today we're going to be chatting about everything that i read over the past three months before we get into it though i just wanted to quickly let you all know that i have finally joined the world of instagram long overdue it feels like the entire publishing industry and book reviewing community is over there. I plan to be quite active posting pictures of pretty new proofs and updating you guys on book reviews as I read things. So if you'd like to, I would love for you to follow me over there and say hi. Okay, so over the past few months, I read 22 books across fiction, short stories, nonfiction, poetry and YA. So many good new releases and quite a few five star reads too. So let's get into it. First up, we have Same As It Ever Was by Claire Lombardo. This is a contemporary family saga literary novel that came out from W and N this summer. It follows protagonist Julia who finds herself on the placid plateau of midlife after many years of upheaval and emotional turbulence. Then when feelings and people from her past return and her son makes a surprising announcement, Julia finds herself drawn back into past destructive patterns once again. I adore Claire Lombardo. Her debut novel, The Most Fun We Ever Had, was one of my favourite reads a couple of years ago. So delighted to say that this did not let me down one bit. She nailed this. This has the most well-crafted, imperfect characters really diving deep into their conflicting feelings and motivations. It is full of messy, painful, joyful human relationships. It is a sharp, sympathetic look at motherhood. I was totally hooked from start to finish. I completely bought every page and by the end I was sobbing. <laughs> this may even be better than the most fun we ever had. I really need to reread that one as well now and compare. She's just firmly rooting herself as one of my favourite family saga novelists this was a five star read. Next up we have Serious Concerns by Wendy Cope. This is a poetry collection that was first published in the early 1990s. These poems are an encapsulation and appreciation of the everyday. The desires and fears and disappointments and happinesses that underpin our ordinary existences. I have come across various Wendy Cope poems in the past the orange being the most popular and a favourite of my mother-in-law. It was about time that I read a full collection by her and I loved this. This is my kind of poetry. Like Seamus Heaney's early work, like Carol Ann Duffy's love poetry, this is full of life and warmth and wit. It has beautiful imagery and some individual lines that are so spot on. Simple and readable in the best way. I really feel like anybody could read this and get something from it. This is a collection I know I will reread throughout my life. It feels timeless. Of course, I gave this five stars. Next up, we have The Summer Swap by Sarah Morgan, published by HQ this spring. This is a contemporary romance novel centering around a beautiful remote seaside cottage and two women who are drawn together. We have Cecilia, who is celebrating her 70th birthday, and Lily, who has recently dropped out of medical school. Cue the arrival of Cecilia's grandson and Lily's longtime crush, and we have ourselves a story. So you may know that I love Sarah Morgan's Christmas romance books. I read one every year. I've never read a summer romance from her before, so this year was the year. And this was basically exactly what I expected. Filled with heart, balancing, touching, realistic character insights and relationships, with an entertaining, high and low filled plot. It wasn't my favourite from her, it did feel 
weaker overall but honestly it just wasn't Christmassy and Christmas is kind of my thing. <laughs> Ultimately really enjoyable, I will always turn to her for a heartwarming, reliable read. So in the end, I gave it three stars. Next up, we have Mammoth by Eva Baltazar, translated by Julia Sanchez, published last month from And Other Stories. This is a short literary novel translated from the Catalan, set in an isolated farmhouse deep in the countryside. It follows the story of a disenchanted young lesbian, exploring themes of queer parenthood, survival and purpose. Eva Baltazar is one of my favourite female writers in translation, and just one of my favourite contemporary writers at the moment. Her earlier novel, Boulder, totally blew my mind and this is just as good. This is unflinching and precise, it has a rawness and a wildness to it that totally sucked me in right from the very first page. Eva Baltazar never shies away from the painful things and she also never wastes words. So emotionally smart and resonant, some of the best translated fiction I've ever read. Just crazy exciting writing. I desperately need to read her debut Permafrost. Of course I gave this five stars. Next we have Made in Manchester by Brian Groom. This is a new non-fiction book all about the city of Manchester and its remarkable people. It came out from Harper North this summer. I read Brian Groom's earlier book Northerners A History last year I think and really really liked it. This is all in a similar vein but it is about Manchester specifically which is where I currently live. This was really good as I expected, full of warmth and insight and joy. This is a celebration of this individual, revolutionary, radical city. It covers industry, art, politics, music and more. It's really readable and digestible. There were definitely some chapters that I enjoyed less than others, but that's cool. If you are from the north or are interested in Manchester, for whatever reason, this is a really good read. In the end, I gave it four stars. Next up, we have Ghost Roots by Pemi Aguda. This is a new short story collection that came out from Virago earlier this summer. Set in Lagos, these stories explore the dark borders between superstition and psychology, with themes of trauma and betrayal and love coming up against the forces of tradition and myth and gender and sexuality in Nigerian society. This is a really solid short story collection filled with empathy and terror and humour. I really enjoyed the way the supernatural loomed over the everyday. In here we get to meet a really interesting cast of characters. While I did enjoy this well enough while reading, and really soaked up the atmosphere. I'm not sure it's left the biggest impression on me since. I didn't fully connect with the stories on a deep level, I'd say, but definitely worth a read for anybody who's into short stories and these kind of vibes. So in the end, I gave it three stars. Next up, we have Sunshine by Melissa Lee Horton. This is a contemporary poetry collection from a few years ago now. It's very introspective poetry exploring a working class woman's relationship with her mental health, body and sexuality. It is said to be at times explicit, at other times tender and sexual and dangerous. So I think this is the lowest I have rated a book this year. This just wasn't for me which was a big surprise because this book has been on my shelves for ages. I've heard nothing but good things. The cover is stunning. I just didn't connect with this poetry. I didn't feel much from it. I didn't take much from it. Also, there were themes in here that just weren't right for me at the moment. This is so raw and just charged with pain so I would know that before going in. There were some effective moments in here, don't get me wrong, 
I could see that the writing was skilled, but I think I was just holding myself at a distance from this one. So in the end, I gave it two stars. Next up, I read The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. This is a new literary mystery novel that came out from the Borough Press earlier this summer. It follows the Van Lars family and a host of characters surrounding them when 15-year-old Barbara goes missing in the same wilderness summer camp where her brother went missing 15 years earlier. This was a good time. I actually listened to the audiobook of this one and totally raced through it. At once an immersive family saga and a gripping mystery. This has a proper good propulsive plot, really intriguing characters, relentlessly gripping mysterious vibes. The setting is also described so perfectly throughout. I loved the two timelines, the two mysteries running alongside one another. I was fully entangled in all of it. My only qualms with this is that the pacing and story beat could have been tightened up in a few areas, but really solid, really entertaining. I would highly recommend, especially if you love this kind of thing on audiobook. So in the end, I gave it four stars. Next up, we have The Half Moon by Mary Beth Keane. Set in upstate New York, this is a literary novel following a marriage in crisis. When Malcolm and Jess see each other for the first time in four months, in the bar that they own as a blizzard rages and snow builds up outside. Mary Beth Keane's earlier book, Ask Again Yes, from a few years ago, is one of my favourite literary novels ever. I think I've been putting off reading this one for fear of it not being as good. Reader, it was not as good. It was still pretty good, don't get me wrong. Mary Beth Keane is such a skilled writer when it comes to the interior complexities of family and marriage. I also liked the slightly perilous vibes here, adding another layer of urgency. But ultimately, it just wasn't nearly as good as Ask Again Yes they're on different levels. Would definitely still recommend this if it sounds up your street, but I just couldn't help but feel a little disappointed. So in the end, I gave it three stars. Next up, we have Four Eids and a Funeral by Farida Abike Ayemadi and Adiba Jaigadar. This is a contemporary YA romance that came out this summer from Usborne. It follows two ex-best friends, Saeed and Siwa, when they must work together to save their Islamic centre from demolition. Farida Abike Ayemadi and Adiba Jaigadar are two of my favourite YA authors. Them collabing together is like a match made in heaven. This was totally delightful, as I knew it would be, told through dual perspectives, both Siwa and Saeed's voices were lush, totally authentic feeling. Their emotions and miscommunications and motivations came across really well. We all knew where this was going to end up, <laughs> nothing was a surprise to me, but I enjoyed the ride anyway. In the end, I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars, which funnily enough is actually lower than I've ever rated anything by either of these two authors individually but I'm still happy they collabed. Next up, I read The Abandoners by Begona gomez Yerzes, translated by Lizzie Davis. This came out at the end of August from the Borough Press. It is a non-fiction book exploring a variety of fictional and famous artistic women who all managed to overcome society's judgment and their own maternal instincts in order to leave their children. I really enjoyed this. I'm interested in books that explore parenthood and motherhood specifically, and this felt like a bit of a different take on it. The idea was born out of Begona's fascination with her own personal prejudice towards these women, so clearly tied up in a much wider cultural bias. And I'm so glad she went there. This confronts feelings that a lot of us carry towards women 
and mothers more specifically and he's all delivered with such wit and intelligence and generosity. Ultimately this felt quite different, quite fresh, also yay for non-fiction in translation. So in the end I gave this one 3.5 stars. Next I read Please Fear Me by Jennifer Love. This is a debut literary novel that just came out in September from Fairlight Books. It follows 16 year old Smidge and her friend Violet as they are on the run through the underbelly of America when they meet a travelling circus and its sinister ringleader and Violet falls under their spell. I liked this book a lot. It explores themes of family ties, addiction and survival. It felt really raw and authentic. Smidge's voice in particular came across really strongly and convincingly. The writing in general was really impressive. I was totally gripped by it and swept along. I do think the first half of the book was slightly stronger than the second half. It didn't quite manage to maintain the intensity and the intrigue throughout, but a really, really good debut. I'm excited to see what Jennifer Love does next. So in the end, I gave this one 3.5 stars. Next up, I read Maps of Imaginary Towns by S.J. Bradley. This is a new short story collection that came out from Fly on the Wall Press at the end of September. These stories are all about our intricate maps of connection taking place in vivid and immersive worlds of dystopias and austerity. This was one of the best short story collections I have read in a while. All of the characters in here felt so real and distinct. I really enjoyed meeting them and getting to know them throughout. I loved the mix of the mundane and everyday emotions and interactions with the more fantastical and dark and odd. There's a real feeling of aliveness in this collection. These stories are just filled with human feeling. From a futuristic colony where a woman builds a rocket to a drab council estate where a little girl finds her magic. There's a whole range of things going on in here. A great short story collection and a really great independent publisher to support as well. So in the end I gave this one four out of five stars. Next up I read our London Lives by Christine Dwyer Hickey. This is a new literary novel that came out last month from Atlantic Books. Opening in 1970s London and spanning the next four decades, it follows two Irish outsiders who find refuge in one another and whose path keep entwining. Millie, a teenage runaway, and Pip, a young boxer filled with rage and potential. This book is me all over. Very chunky, 500 plus pages, multiple perspectives over multiple timelines. It's a rich, moving portrait of an ever-changing city, a deep inquiry into loneliness, and addiction and the nature of love. The characters in here feel very real. The central relationship is messy and fraught and I totally believed it. I really enjoyed this book. I don't know that I totally and completely fell in love with the characters, but it was a real journey and a really, really solid read. So in the end, I gave it four stars. Next, we have Brand New Ancients by Kay Tempest. This is a long form poem, a kind of blend between street poetry and rap and storytelling. It tells the story of two families and their intertwining lives set against the background of the city and braided with classical myth. Kay Tempest is one of the best living poets we have done. I want to read all of their books. This is one of their backlist titles. It actually won the Ted Hughes Prize for poetry and it's just so totally brilliant. Exploring themes of violence, bravery, sacrifice and love. This book shows that the old myths live on in our everyday lives, our personal stories being just 
as awesome as that of the old gods. Hey Tempest is an amazingly innovative and intelligent performer, and you can tell while reading this that it was written to be read aloud. I do think a couple of their newer collections are slightly stronger. You can see their insane skill going from strength to strength, but I love this. It's genius. I would recommend it to everyone. So in the end, I gave it 4.5 stars. Next up, I read The River of Silver by S.A. Chakraborty. This is a companion novel to the Devabad trilogy, a fantasy series set in an alternative magical Middle East where a magical world full of jinn and demons is hidden from human eyes. Also my favourite fantasy series of all time, by the way. So this is a collection of short stories following different main and side characters from the series, spanning decades and decades from before the series to after the series. This is purely for fans of the Devabad series who are just wanting more of the wonderful characters and the lush world. I listened to it on audiobook and while I thoroughly enjoyed it, because I love the series so dearly, it is nowhere near as good as the original series. This was not as well thought through and as coherent as the original books. The characters didn't feel as layered and convincing. The story beats felt tenuous. I enjoyed this, but not through much virtue of this book itself if you get me. <laughs> In the end, I gave this one three stars. Next up, we have My Good Bright Wolf by Sarah Moss. This is Sarah Moss's new memoir. It came out a couple of months ago from Picador. This is an unflinching examination of the narratives that surround women and food, and the way our healthcare systems continue to dismiss the experiences of women and minorities and people with mental illnesses. Sarah Moss is a brilliant writer. I love her novels. I'm quite picky about whose memoirs I read, but this one was a no-brainer. She's clearly such an incredibly intelligent and interesting woman. I'll just take her writing wherever I can get it. This is affecting and open and raw. It's really hard-hitting, she doesn't shy away from the pain surrounding these topics. It's also really whimsical in its writing, creating a surprisingly childlike and fable-like feel to the whole thing, which works really well. A really thought-provoking and tender memoir though not always the easiest to read. In the end, I gave this one four stars. Next up, we have Orbital by Samantha Harvey. This is a short literary novel currently on the Booker Prize list. Simply put, it follows six astronauts as they rotate in their spacecraft around Earth. I had really, really high hopes for this one. Basically, everyone who's read it says it's stunning. Unfortunately, it just didn't do it for me. I loved the setup and the structuring of the distinct chapters, focusing on the different characters and their own unique experiences, all still so drawn to Earth, even though they're separated from it. And the writing is beautiful. I enjoyed the mundane and the more existential philosophical musings. Some of the descriptions were truly awesome as well, in the true sense of the word. I've seen this described as a love letter to the earth and to humanity, and ultimately I think that was the feeling that I was missing. Really, I should have loved this. I'm wondering if I read it in the wrong medium, I listened to it on audiobook, maybe I'd have connected more to it if I'd read it physically. It's a difficult one for me to put my finger on. In the end, I gave it 2.5 stars. Next up, I read Wandering Stars by Tommy Orange. This is another Booker Prize read. 
this one opening in the 1860s in Colorado during the Sand Creek Massacre. Here Star flees and then is captured and imprisoned and is forced to learn English and practice Christianity. The structuring then follows different generations of the same Native American family, generation after generation up to a school shooting in 2018. Wow, this book is so good. I loved everything about this. The structuring is so clever and effective. If you've read Homegoing by Yagi Asi, it's kind of similar to that. This is executed impeccably. Every single character feels so fully fleshed out. I bought all of their voices, all of their experiences. Themes of culture and identity and institutional violence are handled so sensitively and powerfully. The rage and sorrow and love in here makes my heart ache. I was engrossed by this from the beginning right up to the end. It's the step up from Tommy Orange's debut There There that I wanted. I gave this one five stars. Next up we have Untold Lessons by Madalena Vaglio Tanit. This is a new literary mystery novel out from Pushkin Press last month. Set in a small Italian town, it tells the story of a local school teacher who goes missing in the vast wilderness of the local woods when one of her students dies. Then another local child stumbles across her hiding place. I loved this. It's kind of a mystery, but it's incredibly character focused and so beautifully and lyrically written. I loved diving into the teacher's psyche and all of the other peripheral characters we got chapters from as well. The atmosphere in here is basically its own character. It's so thick and oppressive. The setting is lush so richly described. This felt like a really unique reading experience, which I really enjoyed. Such an exciting writer, I am really happy to have discovered her. So in the end, I gave this one 4.5 stars. Penultimately, today we have Memorial by Alice Oswald. This is a long form poem, a retelling of and translation of the Iliad, but with the narrative stripped out. Instead, Alice Oswald focuses on the characters of the story and its atmospheres, resulting in a memorial for all of the war dead, most of whom are little more than a passing name in the original. This is lush, so beautifully executed and affecting. It's a real meditation on the loss of human life. The writing throughout is just stunning. She lifts extended similes from the original, which is so awesome, and she uses a lot of musical repetition throughout, really bringing everything to life. The imagery and wordplay in here is on another level. This is such a unique and special look at the Iliad, I highly recommend giving it a go. Of course, I gave this one five stars. And finally, today we have Not For The Faint Of Heart by Lex Croucher. This is a queer YA romance telling the story of the perpetually grumpy granddaughter of Robin Hood and the annoyingly chirpy girl that she kidnaps as the merry men fight to gain back their positive reputation. You can always rely on Lex Croucher for a good old romp, and this is the best of theirs yet. Full of heart and wit, I laughed out loud, I teared up. The characters are so charming and well-drawn, their different personalities and dynamics coming through really strongly. The whole band of characters in here are just a good time. I really could not have enjoyed this anymore. It was perfect to read while the leaves were falling outside. In the end, I gave this one five stars. There we go, guys. Those were all of the books that I read in July, August, and September. I know my reading's been really good recently, but talking about them all in one place like that, 
the quality. Thank you so much for watching as always. I appreciate it so much. Please let me know if you've read any of these books let me know what you've been reading recently looking forward to chatting down below as always looking forward to chatting on instagram if you follow me on instagram i hope you're doing really well and i will hopefully see you very soon in another video bye guys